It's now time for our children to come up and collect our children's offering. So if you guys would like to do that. <laughs> All right. Who has a Bible? Well, nobody. Seriously. Okay. <laughs> Patty, hold on. Can you open up to Revelation three, verse ten? Do you have a Bible? Do you know where the book of Revelation is? That's the very end. Revelation 3, verse 20. There is no 3, verse 20. What page? Yes, there is. Yes, there is. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm in Hebrews. Wrong one. I went too far. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, the hymnal's not going to be in there. Revelation 3, verse 20. You know what it says? What does it say, Patty? Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. It's a promise that Jesus gave. And in Revelation 3.20, he says, Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and I will share a meal with him. Jesus is called your best friend. That's it. Someone that loves you. Someone that takes care of you. I'm going to tell you a story about three guys. Their name was Charlie, George, and Cliff. Charlie, George, and Cliff grew up together from when they were little kids about Gilbert's age. And when they got a little bit older, they used to like to go fishing. How many of you guys like to go fishing? Anybody like to go, you like to go fishing? Uh, I like to go fishing every time. Wow. I'm Oh, that's a good one. So these three guys, they like to go fishing. And as they grew up, that was one of the things they looked forward to most of the summer. Is when the summer came, they could go fishing every day. So they became friends, and they stayed friends all the way through high school, into college, and as they grew up and went their separate ways. And you're going to find out that sometimes it's hard to keep friends that long, because people move away, uh, you have families, and just different things dry apart. But they would get together every year and try to go fishing. So one year, what they would do is if they couldn't get back to where they would fish when they were children, each one of them would get to pick a place and they would take the other two to that place. Well, this year, <coughs> excuse me, it was George's turn to take Charlie and Cliff. And so they got into George's car and they had their fishing rods and everything <coughs> ready and they put them in a the trunk and George is taking them and he's taking them to the lake. Well, where they were going, the other two guys had no idea, because they knew where all the lakes were. And so Cliff finally says, there's no lakes around here. Where are you taking us? He goes, well, listen, I'm going to take you fishing. <laughs> when I was a kid, I just couldn't wait to do that. <laughs> so he takes some fishing, but he says, listen, 
where we're going, you don't know where this lake is. It's going to be a surprise. So just trust me. So they said, well, okay. So they drive a little bit further, a little bit further. About 10 minutes goes by. And they go, where is this lake? I know this area here. And where you're taking us, there is no lake. He says, you're right. We're not going to fish at a lake. We're going to go up this dirt road here. And at the top of the hill, we're all going to get out. And that's where we're going to go fishing. They're going, if there's no lake, how can we go fishing? So takes the car, goes up the hill, stops the car. They look around, there's nothing but woods. They ask him, where are we going fishing at? Do we need our rods? No, keep your rods here. You don't need your rods. Well, how can you fish without a rod? Because goes, listen. He goes, we're going to go fishing, and we're going to meet the master fisherman. And he goes, on top of this hill, we're going to go down, and then we're going to go up another small hill. And on the other side of that hill, you're going to meet the master fisherman. You know who the master fisherman is? It's God. The guys looked at him and go, okay, so we're going to go down this hill and up the other one, and we're going to meet God. Yes, you're going to meet God. And they looked at him and goes, listen, are we going to die? Is that how we're going to meet God? Hey, that's right. That's what he said, you know. He goes, listen, he goes, when you go over this hill, we're going to meet God, and he wants to meet you, and that's the most important thing. And so Charlie goes, listen, this is crazy. I am not going over this hill because I'm not going to go meet God. I think you're just nuts. Cliff said, listen, if God's really there, don't you think it would be a good thing to go meet him? So George says, that's what's in my heart. He goes, and I want you guys to meet God. Charlie goes, listen, guys, I can't go. He goes, I don't want to go and I don't want to meet God. He goes, because I've got sin in my life. And I don't want to stand in the presence of God. It, it's scaring me right now. He goes, I really need to sit down. I think I'm going to throw up. Have you ever been that nervous before? Yeah. Uh, I've yeah. been that nervous because sometimes I throw up in my bed. And <laughs> really? <laughs> well, listen, that's how Charlie felt. And Charlie was worried, really worried because he didn't want to be God. But listen, George and Cliff said, listen, God says he loves us. Jesus died for us, so don't you think he'd want to meet us, no matter what our sins are? And so, George helped Cliff sit down in the car, because he really wasn't feeling good. And Charlie and Cliff went up over the hill, and George was sitting there by himself. And as he was sitting there, he was thinking, man, I don't want to be here by myself either. Maybe I should go with those guys. And before he could say, wait up, they went over the hill and didn't see him no more. And he was too afraid to move because he still was worried about his sins. So George and Cliff went down the hill and up the hill. You know who was there on the other side? God. Waiting to meet them. And so Jesus met them. Jesus embraced them. And Jesus loved them. And poor Charlie, who didn't go, was wondering, this could be my last chance. What if something were to happen to me? What if I'd never get to give my heart to Jesus and meet him? So listen, in this life, you're only promised one thing. And that one thing is you don't know what's going to happen today or tomorrow. Is that right? You adults out there, is that right? Amen. Right? You guys know. So it is what you do today, right now, that counts. Jesus wants you to give your hearts to him. He wants to have a relationship with you. Do you have a friend? Any friends? Good friends? You have six friends? You're yeah. spending time with them? I have no, eight. Eight? Wow. I have ten. You got ten? <laughs> How many of you adults out there got ten friends? <laughs> you got more than that? That so, doesn't uh, surprise me. I got a lot of them. I got a lot of them. Listen, Facebook, Facebook friends don't count. They got to be real. Wait, it's true. Okay. So listen. What Jesus wants from you and what he promises you is that he gives you today, he gives you right now, and he wants you to give your heart to him. And adults, the same thing. You're not promised tomorrow. And like Charlie, if you wait and it's too late, what happens? Think about that. So Jesus wants you to give your heart to him now. The Bible tells you that today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of our, is the day of our Lord. Same today. Really? Are you excited about that? You know what? The day I was baptized, that was my second birthday. 
Yes? Did you know that? Yeah. How about you guys? How many of you have been baptized? Uh, How many of you have two birthdays? I, have, I actually have had ten. See? Yes. But listen. No, I mean two birthdays in one year. Oh, I Yeah, there you go. The day that I was born, which is July 15th, that's coming up next month, and the day I was baptized, two birthdays that you can celebrate. Do you know what is the one that's most important to me? The day I was baptized. Because that means that in Jesus, I get to live forever. What? Really? Listen, let's bow our heads and we'll have prayer, okay? You're not that old. Listen, we're going to bow our heads and we're going to pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for these children. I pray that you will bless them, that you will watch over them, and that you will fill their hearts with the love that you have for them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And you get to celebrate it. It's really not your own because when you go home, you don't get a car and the presents, right? You know? That's right. Listen, did you know that yesterday was National Donut Day? Oh, yeah. I love mine. Yeah. How could you? That, that's okay. I agree. Because I've seen you guys, I'm sure, and sometimes that's probably good. All right, well,